victory for love and for reconciliation, not for, not, not for fear and division. It is a victory for truth and candor rather than deception and manipulation. The night George McGovern was propelled to the Democratic nomination back in 1972, Debbie Wasserman Schultz with a big win in Massachusetts. And of course, we all know that he got defeated so badly by Richard Nixon back in 1972, but always had a special place in the heart of Democrats. And, and he had a special place in his heart for women. He was the first uh, presidential candidate to nominate and select a chair of the Democratic National Committee, uh, a woman. He also was the first candidate for president to say that we should have women on the Supreme Court and run for vice president. So oh, a generation, yeah, yeah. So yeah. a generation of women to owe me, him a debt of gratitude. To me, we, we had, they had a ticket with Sergeant Shriver, probably the most idealistic tickets that's ever run in this in the country. That these two men sort of had a moral voice, and here's what we should do. But I think the McGovern thing is a very t teaching moment, which is you can lose but still basically carry the day. Without George McGovern, we would have never had Jimmy Carter, and we would have never had Bill Clinton. Without Al Smith, we would have never had John F. Kennedy. And without Barry Goldwater, we would have never had Ronald Reagan. You can lose, and with a moral voice, carry on. Yeah, there, there have been two campaigns, presidential campaigns, in the post-World War II period that completely changed the trajectory of the two parties. And both of them suffered ignominious defeats. Goldwater carrying only seven states in 1964, but changing the direction of the Republican Party, as Matthew said, paving the way for Reagan. And remember, in 1972, when McGovern carried only one state, his Texas campaign coordinator was a Yale Law student named Bill Clinton. So in many ways, the legacy of both Goldwater and McGovern changed the direction That's of American point. politics. You know, but uh, Congressman, uh, Congresswoman talks about what he did for women and for Democrats. Um, let's not forget what he did for the world. He flew about 33 yeah. bombing uh, flights uh, in World War II. That was, I mean, he did so much for, um, for the whole world by flying Which those things. Which is why made his anti-war message so credible. Not, and not only that, and also in his time after the Senate, after being defeated for the Senate in 1980, did run for president one more time, but also continued his work uh, against world hunger. Yeah. And, and alcoholism and years. in later, later years of his life, because it, uh, he... Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think, you know, he's, he's been vindicated. I mean, that's the, the yeah, one absolutely. thing you can say. Yeah. Uh, he, he, I don't he, think he, he needed to be vindicated. Uh, I, th I think vindicated in terms of that humiliating defeat. I think you, 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 you look at the, and his, his face with that defeat, and then you go on, you serve 30 more years, you do, you do as much good for, for, the, for the world when you're not in office as you ever do, were able to do when, you, when you're in office. And, you know, he means, he means, he means a lot to, to not just to, to Democrats. It's just a great thing in politics to see somebody can lose, but basically in the end win because yeah. of what their message was and the moral clarity they spoke with. It, and he was that guy. You look at the and, continuum you know, uh, of their life and their career. National service, concern for the poor, all those things. We all remember him well. Thank you all very much for a great roundtable, for those great memories of George McGovern as well. And for all of you at home, Ralph Gren and Van are standing by to answer your questions on Twitter, at Ralph Reed, at Greta Wire, and at Van Jones 68 Just use the hashtag this week. And now we honor our fellow Americans who serve and sacrifice. Over the past two weeks, the Pentagon released the names of six soldiers killed in Afghanistan.